Hey fellas, Sainz and it's Johnny. This video I'm about to do, you're probably not going to like it. I'm going to be touching on some very personal truths, some truths about why you're not getting the success with women. And uh, I'm going to be bringing up things that you're probably not comfortable with. If you're very brave like myself when I first started and I still am now, you'll be able to hear this and get inspired. If you're not as brave at the moment, it could offend you, it could upset you, it could make you really angry. That's not my problem, that's your problem, you don't have to watch the video. But I always make sure my message in my videos is to inspire people. Uh, the videos are to bring people to their authentic self, spread love, basically to motivate people to go out, to challenge their fears and be the man they want to be. And that comes in the representation of attracting a woman on the street. It starts there and it can go all the way up to doing the job you like doing the business you like, just being the person that you want to become. It could be something very small for you, for someone else, it could be something very big. Basically, my videos are to help you to manage fear. And that good saying from Susan Jeff Jeffers, feel the fear and do it anyway. So right, when I do this video now, I speak on behalf of many men, so it's no one, it's no one individual person. I also speak about myself in the past, and to some extent, myself in the future, right. Enough of the bullshit, because I don't like bullshit. So much dating advice out there. There's some fantastic advice. There's some advice that's terrible. It's really bad. It's very misleading. Sometimes it's very mainstream. Now, it doesn't mean all mainstream dating advice is bad, but most of it is. Some of it comes from the source where I don't think people's full integrity is intact. People are just speaking from a place of ego, or they're speaking from a place of... Um, just wanting to show off about knowledge that they know, but sometimes it's not fully true. Sometimes it's none of those things. It's just the person has still got a way more to go in their development. I'm still learning myself, by the way, but the person hasn't really inquired to what is the proper truth within the problem. So people will touch on the surface base. Obviously, there's obvious things like people want to sell stuff on the internet. Now, of course, I sell stuff. I'm a full-time life and dating coach. I sell online products, but I have full 100% faith that my stuff is coming from a place of truth. I've gone out for 11 years now and I'm still practicing and learning what it takes to be attra uh, attractive, yes, and successful women. And I teach men how to do it every week. If my content wasn't good, it wouldn't have been selling for four years and my brand is continuing to grow. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's right because there's a lot of stuff I believe that sells and hasn't got much truth in it. But eventually people will find out. I think the most great thing about my teaching is it's most of it's done live so you can't bullshit people because when you take them out on the course you've got to demonstrate with the teaching they're going to see straight away if it's working or not so anyway what i'm really saying is hard earned truths as to what it takes to get good with women right reason you're not getting good with women is because you're afraid you have fear that's it the fear is um very complex the fear has brothers, sisters, cousins of its own. So it can start off on a very simplistic level. So I can say to a guy, how come you haven't got a girlfriend? Um, I don't know, man, I just don't have any luck with women. Bullshit and he's afraid. Another question. Um, how come you don't go out on the street? You see my videos, well, you know that you can go out on the street and meet women. You've seen all the free content, amazing videos I do. Why don't you just go out and do it? Guy's gonna say, yeah, I like your videos, man. It's good, but it's not really me, I haven't got time. You haven't got time. Have you got a girlfriend? No. Are you dating the type of women you want to date? No. Would you like to date nice women? Would you like to be confident women? Of course I would, but he doesn't really, he's afraid. He doesn't want to admit it. But he won't admit he's afraid because he's stubborn. Another question could be, I don't know. It could just be, for example, you've got social fear. You've got social anxiety. He'll say, no, I don't really have social anxiety. I just like being by myself. I like staying at home playing video games. It's not fully true. It's talking about rubbish. It's fear. So fear is really what holds you back. Now, when I first started, very young, very naive, I knew I, I knew I felt afraid, but to be honest, I didn't really understand my own psychology. I didn't really, I didn't even really know what psychology was to be honest with start. I knew the word, I understood it's your psyche, but I didn't really understand the depths of how fears can run so deep and affect you and stop you from doing things. I'm gonna give you my own representation of why you're afraid, why I was afraid, how I overcome it, and how you can do the same Depending on what stage you're at, it's going to resonate with anyone. Now, I know being, being a man, the male psychology, the male mind is very smart. 
it predicts the future. So for example, if I said to you, why don't you just go out and face your fear and speak to women, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You're probably gonna get loads of scenarios that are gonna come from in your head, loads of stories. The first thing you wanna probably think of is, are you gonna fail at it? Are you gonna fail, are you gonna look stupid, are you gonna get embarrassed, are you gonna experience discomfort? The second thing, this is not in any chronological order, is you're gonna be, am I gonna be judged? Of course you're gonna be judged in your own mind because when you speak to women on the street, there's, people, there's public speaking basically. You know, it may not all be on you in the spotlight, but you're gonna feel somewhat judged. It's one of the biggest human fears. Judge runs very deep into the psychology of being ostracized from an evolutionary standpoint. If you do something wrong and the tribe uh, disagrees with what you're doing, you can be ostracized. That can lead to be abandonment. And that is the biggest male fear or biggest human fear is being abandoned by our source, abandoned by God, abandoned by our parents, abandoned by our friends, our peers, girlfriend, wife, our self, biggest human fear for all of us. If you study the psychology, I don't really need to go and pull out every different book. I just know that's the truth from experience and working on myself for 11 years and teaching men and mentoring guys for four years. So you're predicting the future and that brings up more fear. Then there's fears of, um, this is gonna shock you if you don't know it already. There's a fear of success because success brings change. Then you, then you might think to yourself, because I used to ask myself the same thing. Why am I afraid to get what I want? It doesn't make sense. And to some extent, on a logical level, it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense. Because I realized it isn't about the free fucking tips to tell her what she wants to hear and get attracted to you, or put on a suit and say a few lines. It runs much deeper. It means you have to change everything. And that, that's why, no more bullshit now. For 2016, I've always been very clear, we're going further and deeper into psychology as to why you're not getting the results and I'm getting the results my students are getting results and other guys are getting results and you can get the same results but you're fucking afraid and you don't admit it and you're lying, you're rationalizing it and that's what we do. We find ways to design our life around not looking at our fears. So a guy will watch one of my videos on YouTube and I've done this myself, so this is not criticism, I'm just pulling things out. He'll go and watch one of my videos, see me succeeding, feel that inspiration or that aspiration, feel good and almost feel a level of completion psychologically and that will rationalize why he doesn't have to go out and actually approach him and do what I'm doing in the video. So he's kind of living through me for the video or through another person that he watches on a video. Feels some merit of success so it's almost like you rationalize why you don't have to go out and do it. In the days or the weeks or the months coming ahead you feel bad again, you're back to feeling no good, back to feeling the low self-esteem, the inner monologue that bullies you, Feelings are not feeling good enough, frustration, anger, rage, resentment, jealousy. You guys can see I've done my homework on this. And then you'll just um, probably eat bad food, drink alcohol, possibly sleep with prostitutes, uh, possibly masturbate to porn, uh, possibly attack people, criticize people. These are the kind of pitfalls and the vicious circles that fear can lead you to through not actually going out and confronting fear. And I wanna bring back to what I said earlier, which I find very fascinating in the psychology of human beings and men, that we predict, we predict further fears ahead. So I remember when I first started, let me let you into a story. I remember thinking, all right, I do feel nervous to speak to women, but it ain't unbearable. It's not like I, I've done it before. I did it when I first started with Floyd. I've had a little bit of success. I know the feeling, I know what it feels like to be socially uncomfortable. I spent many of my years being uncomfortable with myself socially with everyone. So it's nothing new to me. Being, being socially uncomfortable at the time was like, it was like making my bed and getting in my bed. This is my resting place. And the fact I was uncomfortable, I would kind of stay in my comfort zone being uncomfortable. So eventually when I had enough of doing that, I got severe depression, panic attacks, uh, very distorted, divided thoughts. I thought, I'm just gonna go speak to women. It's less painful than how I'm feeling now. But when I started to speak to women, I could see gradual, I could see that there was potentiality of me getting good. So that might come in the representation of a phone number. It might come in kissing a girl. It might come in shagging a girl. Sorry, the, the language is a bit graphic. I'm, I'm, when I'm passionate, I don't think as much I'm half Irish, forgive me. So I'd shag a girl, then I'd feel afraid. I'd feel afraid she's, she's gonna like me more. Now, this girl, is out of my, at the time, not now, she's out of my social class, she's out of my uh, attractiveness, so it threatens my identity, it threatens my friends, 
it, it, to some extent, it threatens my family because I'm thinking in my head, and this is probably irrational. My mum and dad are not even going to think this, but I'm my fears are driving me to think this way. If I bring her home, what if my mum and dad don't like her? What if she doesn't like my mum and dad? What if my friends meet her and they feel intimidated by her? What if they get jealous of me? What if they start attacking me? What if I lose my temper? There's so many fears of brothers and sisters. I would end up finding ways to cut the relationship off or never get into this relationship. And I can guarantee, bet my last dollar, you guys are having something similar. The, the biggest fear, the deep-rooted fear, there's a plant here, I'm about to pull a plant out as a metaphor. The deep-rooted fear is you are frightened and you are very aware, my friend, that you need to change everything. So it isn't about the free fucking tips on how to just get the conversation going or how to have a successful date. This is about the free fucking tips and truths to you changing your life entirely because I realized very quickly into my mentorship being a teacher from about, I'd say the second year in teaching, a year and a half, I'm very intuitive anyway, and I'm, sometimes I make jokes, I'm silly, I'm half Irish, but I am smart. I realized that men who struggle with women were the same as me. There's some deeper underlying issues that have to be addressed at some stage of the person's personal development because they are gonna get depressed and unhappy, and that's why I've said to you guys, it's not about going out and shagging women because that is not gonna fully fulfill you. However, I did that. I wouldn't judge someone if they did it because if you feel you need to do it, then you probably need to do it. But at the same time, it's a waste of fucking time. It's about you facing up to your fears, making the changes that you're fucking shit scared of making to become the person you want to become and dealing with the repercussions of your change and the consequences of you facing your fears. So for example, it's that old saying. It's um, Johnny, you know, Johnny, let's talk about myself here and I'll reference to Johnny Berber at the time. I wasn't Johnny Berber then, it was Jonathan. I'm still Jonathan now, but Johnny Berber was a stage name created. So Johnny Berber, 22 years of age, self-image, not very good. Um, low self-esteem, social anxiety, income is very low, job seekers allowance. That's my self-image to my friends. So how are my friends going to perceive in a few months, let's say in a year's time, Johnny Berber goes from making... Um, Five pound an hour, uh, yeah, five pound an hour, or let's just the job center time, 120 pounds a fortnight. I'm getting 120 pounds a fortnight. That's 240 pounds a month, which is peanuts. Goes from that to making a couple of grand a month. That's, that's a big shift in, in perception and self-image. Goes from wearing rubbish clothes to smart clothes. Goes from being pretty scruffy to a bit less scruffy. I'm careful with my words, I know I'm quite rough and ready, but and then starts being more confident, his body language starts to change, his, manner, his mannerisms change, he's more assertive in his conversations, and he's dating women. He's actually got women in his life. So that's gonna cause a little bit of resistance with friends. Good friends, as always a couple, will be inspired, will be happy for me, they'll be inspired to do the same, or they'll just be supportive. Most friends will feel jealous, they'll feel threatened, there'll be a reaction towards my change, that is gonna bring up discomfort for me and my friends. That's going to leave me with a decision. Do I get rid of these friends? Do I move away? Do I confront them? More things to face. More things to face means social confrontation. For, a, for, a, for a, an ex-socially anxious man, I speak about me, I speak about you guys lightly, we don't like social confrontation. Especially when I come from, at the time, a very violent past where I've been in lots of physical abuse. I'm talking violent fights that I didn't want to have, I was afraid. So that's not a place we want to go, but the psychology is saying that could be a threat, I could fight with my friends. Something as small as me getting a girlfriend and changing my self-image and making more money could cause disruption amongst the friendship. That could hurt my feelings, that could make me feel bad. So can you see the, the in-depth trauma that the mind can play just by going out and speaking to women? That's why I always say, it's not about going out and getting laid. When I say that, what I mean is, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to sleep with women because sex is normal, how are you gonna get a girlfriend? But I'm saying, this goes deeper. That's why my teaching had to be more deeper. That's why it's about self-love because when we don't love ourselves, we don't live the life that we're meant to live. And uh, that gets projected and reflected on our outer reality, which is our friends, our belief system, the way we behave, the way we dress, the places we go to. Now, another thing is, I've got to mention the most important thing, you're worried and afraid about your friends getting disrupted or uncomfortable, you're not comfortable with it because you've been in a thought pattern for so long of being the loser guy, because that's how I felt and I'm not ashamed to admit, I felt ashamed, I felt embarrassed, I felt angry, I felt violently jealous that I'm, how comes I'm not doing what other guys are? I, at the time, it's not nice to say it, but parts of me hated myself and I didn't want to admit that and I hate myself, hate myself and I hate the fact that I felt hate. 
So I had lots of these conflicting emotions going on from feeling not good enough for women and feeling frustrated and confused and all these different, as I said, mixtures of emotions caused depression and all the things that depression brings on. And sometimes you get incredible highs, which is another story. So it was a good reason for me at many stages of my journey to think I'm just going to stop. And I remember getting to a stage where I talked about where I was beginning to grow and then I'd feel very brave for maybe four or five months and then the fear would go bang, it would hit me in the face, it would like the Grim Reaper would come and visit me as a metaphor for fear and it would be sort of be saying to me, well, well that's enough Johnny, you stay as you are now, if you keep growing you're going to disrupt your reality, it's going to offend people. I was, I was frightened of everything, I was frightened of losing my family, my brother, my mum and dad, I was frightened of um, losing all my friends at the time but most of this is rational fear, these things don't happen. And I didn't realize at the time, I wasn't comfortable with the change. There was a massive part of my psychology, and it's kind of weird to say this, I spoke to my friend about this, it's very common, I suppose, in the human psyche, especially when you've had abuse, trauma, you've been in this thought process that didn't want to change because this is all I knew, even though I wasn't happy with it. So it's like living, it's like being in a bad relationship, you're not happy with the girl, you don't enjoy the sex no more, you don't like being around the person, it's argumentative, but that's all you know, you've been doing that for such a long time, to stop the relationship, move into another one, there's fear there, there's unknown territory, so change brings on the unknown, change brings more responsibility, because when I went from a guy that couldn't make eye contact, bad body language, bad body language, sorry, to being able to make eye contact, people stand my ground, feel good, love being around people, there was pressure there, I was literally zipping out of a suit and jumping into another suit, there's physical pain, the spiritual pain, the psychological pain, but the good thing is, once you start getting on this journey, you'll have a story to tell like mine, and a story is powerful, people pay to hear my story. My story is inspiring, inspires me, I like talking about my story, sometimes I can't believe what I've achieved. It makes me connect with other people that have had an amazing story that changed their story. It's the reason why I work with my mentor, because I love this story, it resonated with me. Jeff's story resonated with me, it helped me to clear up certain things in my life to improve my story, it helps me to teach people to change their story. So, this is the real reason why you're not doing it. Another reason is, surprisingly, making the excuses, I don't have enough money. Most times, guys do have enough money. Most of the guys I work with are in their early 30s. They've got enough money in the bank, they could afford a couple of hundred pounds or a thousand pounds for a course, which could sound like a lot, but it's peanuts. I spent thousands of pounds on life coaching, every penny is worth it, especially with a good mentor. I would have gave a million pounds to take his pain away. Guys will say stuff like, it's too expensive, I don't have the money, but then they'll go and spend hundreds of pounds on a high class hooker, and then some guys will go and take cocaine, some guys will smoke weed. This costs a lot, this costs much more money. So investing in a mentor, Investing in pain to get rid of your pain is the best investment you can ever make. You can't always blame a coach and say it's his fault or his course is too much because there's, there's free content online. Most of the time it's just you. You are the guru anyway. The mentor always points you back to you. So the guys that make amazing changes, like my last reviews, these guys invest in me because they know I'm no fucking bullshit. If you're gonna come on my course and you're gonna put the work in, you're gonna make the changes. Ain't gonna be easy to start with, but you're gonna be in bliss, you're gonna be happy, your life is gonna be changed. If you don't go towards the mentor route, which I didn't, to be honest, I had Floyd to support me, but I never paid for membership, because I, I physically couldn't afford it. I had no money. I had no money in the bank. I didn't have rich family that could say, here's the money. I wasn't gonna ask for the money. I had to go out in the streets and literally, almost feel to some extent like a beggar going up to women to start with, but I, I didn't care, I was on my purpose. I knew that I, I had good qualities, I just had to kind of, I had to work through these fears and these insecurities that were placed on me that I, that I never had no fucking choice. So I just put the shit on me and I had to deal with it. I was gonna even cry about it, moan about it. I got done with the crying, I got done with the fucking moaning, done with the passion blaming the world. I wanted to take responsibility because I knew once I got the results, no one could come forward and say I, I did it myself. So at the same time, blaming myself, I've always, I was always kind of rewarding myself and I eventually went out and made it happen and created a whole new reality for myself. Of course, when you actually go through the process, you get, a, you get a real good understanding. That's the beauty of a teacher. A guru can see where you're going wrong because he's gone through that process. You're still at stage one and the guru is at stage 30 and he's saying, I can get you up to my stage if you trust me and listen to me and follow these steps. And you know that anyway, deep down. So this is the real truth why you're not getting results. Another one is as well, the social conditioning. I don't really, I can go into it a little bit. All right, we'll do it, fuck it. The social conditioning is telling you, the narrative is saying that 
it's not normal to go out and meet women on the street. Men shouldn't really go up and approach women. You've obviously got a feminist movement. I, to be honest, I don't have nothing against feminism. I don't have anything against anyone that wants to have freedom of speech. I don't have to agree with it. There's good and bad in everyone. I'm just making a point. There's feminist propaganda. You've seen what the BBC did with me. Again, I'm not resentful towards them. Actually quite happy that they promoted me. It wasn't in the best light, but I still got free publicity, free marketing. That cost, I spend hundreds of pounds a year paying for my own marketing, so they did it for me for free. And uh, I understand why they did it, they had their own reasons, so I'm making a point that there are so many ideas out there, and what I said to my friend Maurice, he liked the other day, I said to him, there are beliefs out there that are true, but it doesn't have to be true for you. It wasn't true for me that because I'm from a council state, I can't become a professional date, date and life coach and sleep and date with women that are out of my social class and out of my league. Or That's not even how I felt. That was what was put upon me. Even friends in my social circle were saying, you can't go there or you can't get a woman who's Turkish because of different cultural reasons. I'll go and do it, sleep with a Turkish woman, have amazing connection, that's done. Uh, you can't sleep... Um, with an English girl, I go and do that, that's done. You can't um, do this, you can't be that honest with women, they won't, ex I go and do it, it works. You can't tell women that you do this job and they're still gonna, they're not gonna sleep if you'll date you. I go and show them my job, I show them the videos, they date me, so I just keep breaking these beliefs, breaking these beliefs. Every time they rise up, as Jeff said, challenging them, challenging them. But the difference between guys who don't take action, as soon as the belief rises up, they get frightened, back to square one, watching the videos, watching the videos, YouTube, buying products. And I sell the anxiety program, I stand by that product, it's a very good product, it's helped loads of men. I'm definitely making a new product this year, but basically a product is a stepping stone to get you to go out and to do it. To be honest, I'm putting up free products every fucking day of the week on YouTube. The videos are rich, full of content, there's so much, there's just so much honesty in them. That's how I got good, that's how students get good. I'm not hiding anything, but you guys still ain't going out and applying it. And when I see hateful comments, it doesn't bother me. Doesn't, it honestly doesn't bother me. I had some really vicious ones this week and I just think, God, he's still at stage one. He hasn't realized his full potential. That's fear speaking. That's not even that person attacking me. That's his fear swearing at me. So this is the real reason, guys. Now, you could take this video and think, fuck it out, this is doom and gloom. I'm excited to share this with you. This is 11 years for me to make this video. This is, I, I'm excited. This is my truth. My truth was it wasn't easy to get these results, but I did it and it was fun and I enjoyed it and I've become the man I always wanted to be and I continue to strive to keep improving and the most exciting thing is I didn't just make the changes for myself I've changed hundreds of men all around the world the men that have done my six weeks program guys on YouTube the Skype coaching I do this is powerful work I don't take credit for all of it I told you God gives me a hand in this you guys help me as well with all your support but there's still a massive amount of men out there that are never gonna get the success of women because they choose to stay in that same place. Now, I appreciate, I've said it numerous times, you guys know how hard my journey was. Social anxiety is not a joke, it's very difficult to overcome. It's the fear of social judgment. I was bullied at school. I had someone very close to me that gave me some harsh criticism when I was 17, 18. It hurt me deeply psychologically. It affected my social interactions. It affected my self-worth. It affected me trusting people in relationships and family, friends. I had to work through a lot of psychological trauma, but I'm glad I've done it. And it, it, it was the main thing that inspired me to go out and get the results. And then when you get the results, you kind of laugh in your head because you think it was easy. It was, I made it harder than it needed to be because I believed what everyone else said. So because your friend says it, you make it true for you. There's many truths in the world. I'm gonna give you a few truths now. Looks do matter, right? Listen to what I'm saying. Women like attractive men, but that's not true for me. That's not true for me. Now, you may say, well, fucking hell, Johnny, you're not a bad looking guy, you're quite handsome. That's very flattering. Some people would say he's average looking. I would say I'm average looking on a scale, on a global scale compared to really good looking men. But that, you know, it doesn't matter for me because I know who I am, I'm congruent, I know how to speak to women. And I've got the results, I've got the proof in my own life. I've slept with enough women. That's, that's done for me. I've got, you, you can't deny it. When a woman is in your bed, you're sleeping with her and she loves you, or you're dating her. And then when you can go out and I'm not showing off, I'm inspiring you, I'm inspiring myself because I went for a lot of shit to get to this place. I speak to my old self to give myself a pat on the back. When you've got the abundance where you can literally go out and meet women anytime you want. And then when people are saying stuff to you like flaking or that girl, you don't care, you're in abundance, right? But I want to help you. And that's the reason why you're not going out and getting the results. And there's, um, there's probably other deep 